junk, uh, Rubbish to Gold, a unique collaborative project that happened here at the School of Jewelry, created by um, three people, myself, I'm Jivan Astfak, a professor here at the School of Jewelry, Birmingham City University, Laura Bradshaw Heap and Rachel Dabon. One day, uh, Laura came to the School of Jewelry with two plastic bags full of something. And she opened it all up in a, in a pile down there in the, in the atrium uh, on a table. And it was amazing, it was all sort of jewelry, and very tacky jewelry. And she told us that she, she started talking with people working in a charity shop and found out that behind the few pieces that they sell in front of the shop in the cabinets, they are receiving masses of donations of discarded jewelry pieces that they don't think they can resell. This is the, the most human of all bags. That's where all the hairs are. <laughs> and so we figured that there are, in the back rooms of charity shops, that there are piles and piles and piles of jewelry pieces that have been thrown away. Thanks to Drew Marku, we have this beautiful space which is um, part of his studio, which was the old post office in Erdington, and it's now, um, yeah, it's now his studio. And uh, he very kindly has donated this tiny little room, which is now holding 650 kilos of junk jewellery donated to us um, by all of our charities. And there's, there's a lot. Um, I think altogether it was over 100 charity shops, all based in the UK and in Ireland, they collected for us. The three of us came to realise that we had a project here. We were then thinking about our invisible uh, skills as designers. What would happen if we invite a whole bunch of people who have already established themselves as, as specific makers? By specific I mean they have studio methodologies established and to see what they do with that rubbish. We wanted it big, so we thought 10 people every day, allowing them the complete freedom and, and, and the time out of the restrictions that they would otherwise have in, with, in their studio practice. I have to leave my comfort zone doing this and, and playing with the chunk. And I found out that some kinky little girl must be inside of me. So those 10 people worked for five hours a day and we um, created sort of like uh, uh, tables um, downstairs in, in the atrium where there were an absolute open view all day long. And the camera team was there to um, film them making and it was live streamed uh, via YouTube and two museums here in, in Birmingham, the Midlands Art Centre, we call it the MAC, and the Jewelry, um, the Jewelry Quarter Museum. So while we were making, we also had a presence in a kind of mediated way alongside the material exhibitions. So we had, um, we had audience interaction in three different places at the same time, plus all the kind of like um, engagement with audiences that happened on the internet. So it happened on two places. Craft House um, allowed us to have an online exhibition and also was our home for our, our online bidding process. And we were also on our website, of course. So the streaming, I think, um, on the first day only, this was watched by people from nearly 30 countries, which I find really quite impressive. So. And uh, so what happens if one brings so many people together in one place to make something? If you like a five-day uh, residency, every day is, is a different grouping. So it, it shifts all the time. I spent the first two days working on one piece and realizing that I was being too uptight and trying to get a little looser with the materials over the three days that I was here. I've got about one, two, three, four pieces going on at the same time at the moment, I think. But 
Some of them might get discarded, some of them might not really work out. Some people came for one day, some people were able to be here for two days. One person was here all the time, <laughs> and then of course we were here all the time. So it was a very kind of like in here, open to a, a wide uh, sort of audience participation and interaction in, in a sense uh, through, through the, the web activities and Facebook activities so were very lively indeed. The process of making is a very individualized, very private activity. It was less social than I thought it would be. We were all sort of quiet and focused on what we were doing because the ticking clock kind of makes you feel like you really have to figure out what you're going to do and get it done in the time that you have. The project has been really, really exciting to be able to have so much to choose from, from the pile of junk, and to be able to deconstruct it and create from that. The, the choices of colours and materials has been quite, yeah, exciting to work with. As a practitioner, I think it will it'll open my eyes up to what I, can, what I can actually play with to create my work from. I'm sure everyone has probably had the same experience. When you lose all of the methods that you normally work with, what are the criteria then that you use to determine how you're going to make a piece? You know, the color or um, the form, um, the material choices was what we were limited to. Uh, I was trying to sort of figure out how do I still see myself when I reduce a lot of the things that I normally work with? What actually is motivating me when I make work, even under these circumstances? So I, I don't know if. I entirely succeeded, but I feel like I was sort of struggling with that the whole time, and it was interesting to make myself struggle. Throughout the exhibition, the public had the opportunity to bid for one of the generated pieces via a silent auction, in person or via our Facebook page, with the highest bidder announced after the exhibition, and a share of the proceeds was returned to our partnering charities in proportion to the weight of the jury that they have donated to the project. And as you can see, and those of you who, who watch um, the YouTube streaming, you can see the individual makers becoming very internally focused. And even though it was, it was so busy, people went into this really beautiful space of being completely and utterly focused on, on making their work. And that for us was one of the very best outcomes that one can do something collectively together, um, maybe also for a common good, um, as um, restricted as it might be, and at the same time create a personal and private space.